Okay, so what we need to do now is make the crank for the pedals, and we also need to build a couple pedals. So uh, these won't work off the regular bicycle. So what I'm going to do is I'm using some black oil impregnated ultra high molecular weight, also known as UHMW. I'm going to cut these into four inch pieces, and I'm going to drill a 5 8 inch hole in the middle that will slide over our 5 8 inch cold rolled steel uh, rod. Now ideally you would get um, turned and ground rod which works really good as shafts that way your bearings will just slip right on. So we're, again we're going to use our bender to uh, make the bends in this uh, shaft so that we can get our pedals made and we are going to do it in six inch increments. So I'm going to have a six inch tab off the side then it will go up six inches over six inches down a foot, six inches, six inches, you know, and so on until we have the crank completely made. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to be sliding my little chunks of UHMW where the pedals go, and I'm going to pre drill screw holes and everything else, uh, as well as countersink. Um, so, and I'm going to use blocks of wood, uh, either weather treated woodworks or oak work, something. Um, that's solid, sturdy, and it's going to last in weather and be able to take some dirt, mud, and water. So, um, in addition to be, uh, sliding these on, I'm also going to slide my bearings on at the same time. And so what I did is I just got standard, uh, inexpensive $10 roller bearings, capture bearings. Key thing is to make sure that they have... Uh, threaded inserts in it so that you can lock it onto the shaft. So um, if your shaft is not turned and ground, like this one is not, uh, unfortunately my metal supply place locally did not have it and in order to order it long enough I'd have to get it from Chicago. I live in Cleveland and the cost for an 8 foot long rod of 5 8 cold rolled steel was more than the rod. So um, I just bought the plain old and what I'm going to do, the tolerances are pretty tight. So all, it's just going to require a little bit of sanding, a little bit of oil, a little bit of love, a few taps with a, a good mallet. And I'm going to put the bearings on in place as I build this, the bearings and the pedals as I build this. Because once I make the bends, I'm not going to be able to get these things onto the rod. Okay, so I'm getting ready to bend up the bar here. Um, what I did is I included a roller pin on here to help this uh, linchpin roll around the steel. Uh, what that will do is help prevent the unit from trying to draw the bar in around the center pivot uh, as I do this, uh, which can throw your measurements off. And then, of course, I'm using the stop block. I just got the stock run through. I will measure out my first six inches, and I will line that up right as uh, the bar stock makes contact with the center linchpin. So then, of course, I have my UHMW uh, pedal parts that I based off of this. Now they're slightly shorter. They're about three inches in length. And I'll put a piece of material between them. So there'll be two per. The shaft will run through just like a regular pedal. And of course my bearings. So I'm going to make my first bend here, and then I'll put the uh, outer bearing on, and then I'll start to make the other bends, um, and then start adding. One of the important things uh, that is uh, going to need to be addressed is safety um, if you're intending to put this out on public roads. Uh, you have to check your bike laws here in Ohio. They recently, about a month ago, updated the bike laws to include uh, four-wheel bicycles, uh, but you do need to have certain things like mirrors, um, and I'm going to be adding uh, lights, headlights, tail lights, a brake light, and a turn signal with an audible horn. Now that you don't really need, it's just something I want to add in. But uh, rearview mirrors is always a big thing uh, to add. So what I'm doing is I just bought some regular old bicycle mirrors, and I drilled a couple five-eighths inch holes. And then I oversized the bottom hole so that I could slide a fender washer for a quarter inch uh, nut inside. 
and then I'm going to slip that in and then I'm going to take a universal jointed uh, socket and I'm going to slide this in so that I can capture it. Now if you can find um, a shaft on a mirror that's long enough to go all the way through the PVC, you don't need to do this. This one doesn't because it's actually made to go around a clamp. The clamp's on the handlebar. So I'm making some adjustments. Okay, so like I said, uh, in the interest of safety, I have a couple mounts, uh, mounted headlights with generators that also come with tail lights that I will need to extend the wiring back to the tail lights. These generators I'm going to run off my front wheels. I also have a bike speedometer with odometer uh, so that way I know how fast I'm going. Now I'm going to need to increase the length of the speedometer cable here because this is actually going to fit on the hub of this front wheel here. And this uh, little tab goes inside the spokes and that's what actually turns the shaft to make the speedometer go. And last I have a turn signal, left right turn signal and brake. Uh, that also comes with a front headlight, but that's also the controller. Um, this I'm going to mount uh, probably on the handlebars so it's accessible. has eight different horn settings. Um, so it's pretty slick. Uh, about $25 on Amazon. Uh, all of this combined is going to help me uh, stay visible along with the bright yellow paint. Uh, which of course safety is a key thing if you're going to be on any public road. Brakes, of course, is the most important thing, which we will get to. Uh, okay, so this third brake light I showed you is going to need a little bit of rewiring. Uh, this uh, little switch here actually connects into um, the rear brake. And so uh, I'll position this once I get the brakes on and lined up. But I, what I need to do is I need to extend both of the cables because they're nowhere near long enough to get the controller which is this piece, over to where my handlebars are. Because remember, this is meant to go on a bicycle, not this. This is significantly larger. So I need to extend these. Uh, I'm going to use a better gauge uh, electrical wire to do this. Uh, that way I don't have to deal much with voltage drop because this is LED based. If you are using something that's LED based, you have to make sure that you can transmit enough of the power out to deal with the voltage because if you don't have at least seven tenths of a volt getting to the LED circuit, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart, desolder some wires, uh, cut new wire lengths, and then resolder and reassemble. Okay, so what you're going to see here is that I have a six conductor cable that I got to replace and a two conductor cable. Uh, it's really going to depend on the brake uh, turn signal system if you decide to use one, uh, what the wiring schematic is going to be like. Uh, but make sure you look at this first before you go by cable uh, so that uh, and take a photograph or take really good notes. Photograph works great because then you can look at it uh, and make sure you know what color wire is getting uh, re-soldered onto what portion of the circuit board. Uh, and this is going to be the same for the controller end because I'm going to have to do that. Now you could also cut the wire and splice new wire in if you're not comfortable with soldering on a circuit board to make your extension. Now that could get kind of kludgy because we are dealing with six conductors here for the main control but uh, if you're comfortable enough with that we can certainly uh, manage it pretty simple. It's really just uh, desoldering and, and resoldering in the exact same location so it's not like you're trying to manage an integrated circuits or anything like that so it's pretty straightforward.